Well, as Rick Santorum gets uh, photographed by the pool down in Puerto Rico by some of the uh, dozens of a an all-gay cruise ship going by, and and then today or, y- or yesterday or today, I've, I'm not sure which, um, is is subject to people basically pointing out his homophobia by having two men kiss in the audience. The Santorum agenda, according to Professor George Lakoff, professor of cognitive linguistics at the UC Berkeley and author of several books, including The Political Mind and Don't Think of an Elephant, is much bigger than just that small slice of bigotry that so many of us know Mr. Santorum for, former Senator Santorum. Thus, Professor George Lakoff, back on the program with us, sir. Welcome back to the program. What a pleasure to be here. It is an honor to have you. Uh, You wrote a very, very thoughtful and thought-provoking piece, Why the GOP Campaign, that was published over on Alternet, uh, a week or so ago, why the GOP campaign for the presidency is about guaranteeing a radical conservative future for America, in which you suggest that this isn't just uh, Santorum trying to win the, the presidency, that this is, there's a really larger agenda here at work. Tell us about that. Well, uh, first, when you talk about any particular issue, uh, what you, in order to, to make that uh, comprehensible, uh, what has to happen in someone's brain is all of uh, the, uh, con- let's suppose it's a conservative uh, issue, all of the conservative moral positions and their conservative uh, framing for, ev- for just about everything has to be evoked. Mm-hmm. So what is going on in the campaign is they are using conservative language. Uh, conservative language is defined relative to conservative framing and conservative moral moral views. Give me an example. Well, uh, suppose you're um, talking about spending, right? That has to do with, that assumes that uh, spending is not spending on something that is necessary and worthwhile for the nation, that it's, um, you know, uh, spending that's superfluous. We had a debate earlier uh, today on this program uh, with Seton Motley. I was debating him about whether or not our libraries should be privatized. And I was saying, no, they should be they're part of the public good. And uh, uh, after the debate was over, one of our listeners called in and said, Seton was basing his argument on a false uh, uh, dilemma that either we can have the public good or we can have individual freedom, but you can't have both. That's the assumption. Uh, the progressive moral system assumes that democracy is based on the idea that citizens care about each other, that they set up a government whose job is to protect and empower everybody equally, uh, and they do that through some notion of the public, that is, setting up uh, public institutions, services, um, infrastructure, educational systems, health, and many other things that benefit the, benefit the public at large. Uh, the conservative view is very different. They assume that democracy is about liberty, the liberty to just pursue your self-interest and not be responsible for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are two views that don't fit together. So you're going to get exactly that view, uh, let's say, about privatization. From the conservative view, everything should be privatized. Uh, everything that could possibly be privatized should be privatized. And uh, you shouldn't have public uh, any notion of the public at all unless it's absolutely necessary. So that is that's the the general view, and you see it everywhere. Yeah. So the the liberal view that you just described is the one that has that certainly held ascendancy during the New Deal after people were confronted with the horrors of a government that wasn't there to catch them when they fell in the nineteen twenty late nineteen twenties exactly. early nineteen thirties, and and it started to evaporate when R- R- Ronnie Reagan, as we used to call him. Um, this fellow that uh, those of us old enough to remember the time thought, there's no way this guy will get elected president. There's movies of him with a chimp out there. Right. Uh, when he became president and suddenly, you know, starting with his inaugural ball, where, you know, it was designer outfits and who's got the most millions of dollars with the jewelry on and, and the biggest limousines and, you know, the exact opposite of the Jimmy Carter presidency. Um, the values of, of greed is good. And that Reaganomics system and Reaganomics worldview has pretty much held America in thrall ever since, has it not? Well, what's happened is this. 
the uh, conservatives have set up a remarkable communication system mm -hmm. with a system of think tanks, with uh, specialists in uh, framing issues, um, with a um, uh, training institute that's training institutes train tens of thousands of conservatives a year. Uh, they keep track of them. They have them speaking in local venues. Um, they have booking agencies booking them on TV and radio and in local venues all over. And uh, they send out messages as to what to say. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been going on for many, many years, like 30 to 40 years. And uh, it's, what happens is that when you hear conservative messages, uh, those, the language affects your brain. That is, uh, every word is defined relative to a brain circuit that characterizes what's called a frame. And uh, those frames um, are fixed in your brain after you hear enough of those messages. Uh, unless you they, hear a countervailing message at the same time. Unless you hear a countervailing message at the same time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, moreover, those messages to make sense have to fit a certain moral perspective, which we just mentioned in part. But there's a, there's a deeper part that has to do with family values. Uh, mm -hmm. Conservatives have uh, what I call strict father family values. And progressives have nurturing parent family values, and they're really different values. And we understand um, uh, institutions that govern us in term, you know, in terms of families. And those institutions can be churches, uh, uh, classrooms, teams, or nations, or the market. And so, uh, and in that, in a, in a strict father family, uh, no one has more power than the father. No one can contradict the strict father. He's moral and he's in charge. Mm -hmm. And when you map that on to conservatism, it says no, no, there should be nothing above conservative principles. Uh, you know, therefore, if you have a conservative view of the market, where the market is the decider and the market decides, then uh, you shouldn't have anything above it, like um, regulation, taxation, uh, worker rights, or tort cases. Uh, or any view of science that contradicts uh, conservative views. So what you have is a moral uh, picture from a conservative perspective of what democracy is and what it is to be moral, and that is structuring a whole cascade of frames that comes down to particular issues. So, uh, for example, if you take the question of birth control and whether uh, you should have uh, ins your insurance company or your employer should be paying for a woman's birth control pills. Mm -hmm. Well, notice that that's a special case of whether uh, anybody else should be paying for birth control pills, which in turn is a special case of whether anybody else should be paying for your health insurance, mm -hmm. which is in turn a special case of whether anybody else should be paying for anything you get. In other words, each of these is within the frame of the, of the next one. Each of them is within the frame of the next one, and they're all activated, and they follow from the conservative view of liberty, namely to seek your own self-interest independent of anybody else, but also to be individually responsible but not socially responsible. Do you think so that the, the reason, and we just have about 30 seconds here left, do you think that the reason why Limbaugh is being rejected is because he was playing strict father and then he went crazy? Well, he was playing strict father, and he crossed the line. Right. That is, the strict father has to, you know, he has to be strict, but he also has to be, um, you know, civil, you know, in, in his own community. Right. Protect, protect the children, essentially, and uh, this woman he attacked was perceived as a, chi as a child, even though she's, a, she's an adult woman, but I mean... Exactly. In the, by the conservatives, I'm saying. Right. Exactly. Very, very interesting. George Lakoff, Professor George Lakoff, the website George Lakoff, L A K O F F dot com. And uh, if you have not read The Political Mind or Don't Think of an Elephant, get them. Brilliant writing. Professor Lakoff, thanks so much for being with us today. Great to be here, Tom. Great speaking with you. It's an honor. We'll be right back.